Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to go through a 2017 Toyota Corolla and change all the bulbs to LEDs. Or if not changing them to LEDs, I'll show you how to change them if they're burnt out or something like that. Alright, so now that we are inside of the car, here is the first ones we're going to change. We're going to change these map lights or dome lights. Then we're going to change this one in the middle. Alright, so all we're going to do is basically, there's a couple nibs in here, a couple nibs around. So all we're going to do here is get a screwdriver in, all, in these creases and pop it out. But I'm using this terry cloth or an old shirt just for protection so you don't scratch around any of the sides. Alright, so once we stick it in, and I dropped my, uh, I lowered the uh, mirror obviously just to give you a little better leverage. Seems like the easiest part to start with is the bottom here. So this part's already, that part's out right there. Slide it around, and that's already half your job, so it's already pulled back. Now I can probably do this without the screwdriver. I do is without the terry cloth, get my fingers in there, and go along the sides, get that nib, make sure that nib is good. So I'd recommend leave it like this. So just take all these prongs off, you got one prong, two prong, three prong, four prongs on the side here, and there's two, two more prongs right here. But uh, this is all you need for now, so just hold this forward, and then you can easily access the bulbs. See how much space you got? You got easily enough space. So just make sure that so just make sure that the you do turn it off because these incandescent bulbs are very very hot when they are on and they don't cool down quickly not like LEDs so this is we're going to change these to LEDs let me see if it's cool enough to take off whoa it's still very hot let me see if I can take one of these off now it's still very hot but We'll see what we can do. And again, if I had two hands, I could hold it. I could hold it and pull it apart easier, but there you go. That's your bulb. Your old incandescent ugly bulb. And now let me swap it out with the new and improved version, which are gonna be these LEDs. Five SMD LEDs. These are what I use for all my cars. I love it. Been working great for me for years. Every car I've had. And of course, yeah, I'm probably paying a little bit for this container, but don't mind every now and then. So let's change this out and we'll swap that back in. So these little wedge bulbs, they call them. These bulbs are used very commonly through this car and also through many other cars. Just a reminder that if so here's the before and the after and this is the before ugly orange and this is the nice led whitish blue version afterwards and it's a much brighter light as you could tell so so when you want to use your lights you want brighter lights i mean that's why they have lights so i always recommend changing these ugly orange stock ones which are dull they're not pretty looking they're orangey yellow to these nice clean bright white ones makes it look so much cleaner you know it's all about the little modifications that makes the car so that's your before and after there let me turn these lights off so we can change this guy now so let's turn that off and let's get at that and again we're gonna go for the nibs we're gonna put our tiny screwdriver in here we're gonna looks like there's one nib here one nib here and I would assume one and one there. So let's get that off. Let's jam our screwdriver in there. And that's how simple it is. That's one. And this is two. If I could do this with one hand, everybody, you guys can do it with no problems with two hands. <laughs> and there you go. This pops off. And this is a different kind of bulb. So you can see this is, this is a, um, I think it's called the DE3175. You can see this bulb right there. Whew, very, very hot. So 
Let's just swap that out. Here you go. The easiest way to pull this out is either, obviously, you could pull it out. Or you could just kind of press on this a little bit, and it should loosen enough to pull it out or just fall. All right, so now we're going to swap this out. And here is my bulb. So here is my LED bulb that I'm going to be swapping it out with. Going to be a nice, cleaner, brighter light. So here's your after shot of the LED light. I just got to tighten this down, snap it into place, but that is how it's done. So now that's all snapped back in. No fuss, no muss. All right, so now it's all snapped back in. And I do recommend, this is a little bit harder than normal. So I do recommend putting in maybe the front two and then getting a screwdriver and wedging it back into place because this is really tight for the back half, all right? So next on our to-do list, put our mirror back, of course. All right, next thing we're going to do is go to the trunk and change these trunk light bulbs. All right, now that we're in the trunk, we might as well change this little guy right here. So I'm gonna try and get a good angle, but it's gonna be tough. So there's your bulb right there. And this, they get kind of a weird housing. So if you look on this side right there, you're basically gonna be uh, taking that off. You're gonna push that this way, and then this will be like a hinge point. So all you do is you push this, away and this falls so that's all you need to do and then just pick this out pick the, and then just take your bulb out and swap it and again what I use is a 5 SMD LED to swap these out so it'll give your trunk much brighter light than it currently is and then to close it up there you go all right so now that we've got the trunk changed out let's do some other wedge bulbs and that's going to be our license plate bulbs. Unfortunately, they hit it, so you got to take all this carpet off, or at least the first half. So let's see how it's done. To change out these license plate bulbs, what we're going to have to do is take apart most of the carpet here. And it looks like on the Corolla, they use some strange, instead of push pins that come off with normal screwdriver, these are actually a little bit different. So I'm sure they sell some expensive tool to try and take these off, but I like to just use a real small screwdriver. And basically, you can push all the way through on one of these. So you can see your little screwdriver come out the other side, and then basically all you got to do is pull. It's not easy again, but at least you won't mess it up. So pull and twist. Pull again from the other angle. So one of the so one of the ways I noticed that you can take these out a little bit easier is by pulling also on the carpet. This will give you much better leverage. So you can pull basically on two hands, just like that. So that comes off. That's how I get my screwdriver all the way through. You can see it all the way through. And that's one. No damage at all. It's done like this. So let's see if I can do the second one the same way. And it works. Simple process. Don't need to buy some expensive tools to do this. But if you got a lot of money, then go ahead. But if you have a lot of money, you'd be going to the dealership. Or should I say steal the ship and having it done there. You'd be doing it yourself. And watching this video. Alright. So we gotta take apart a couple more of these. So I'd say four total screws it looks like. Or push pins I should say. Next one. That's three, and the last one. Come on. There you are. 
Just make sure you don't lose your push pins. These are expensive to buy from the dealership, all right? All right. All right, so this is the back of the license plate bulb that you're gonna take out. Basically all I'm gonna do is just twist this whole thing. This whole black thing will come out. All right, just twist and pull. And here. So your bulbs for your license plate will be here and over here. This is what it looks like from behind. All right, so surprise, surprise. It's a wedge bulb again. So let's go ahead and change this and I'll show you the before and after picture. And again, this may or may not work because of the fact that I may have it in backwards. So what I recommend is turn your headlights on first of all. That way, as soon as you put it in, it should turn on or it's gonna let you know if you have it backwards or not. So license plate bulbs are not always on. Your headlights usually have to be on or maybe parking lights. And hey, I got it in right. So if this did not light up now that your parking lights are lit up, what you want to do is just turn the bulb around 180 degrees. Okay? So here I'll show you the after pick of it. And there you are, before and after. Before and after. See how much cleaner that is? I'll turn off the lights so you can look at that difference. See the clean, bluish, whitish look, and then the original OEM orange. So this is one of the first modifications that I see on cars, that as soon as I see this, it tells me, hey, these people care about the car, they modified their car, and I just love to see it myself. So I recommend doing this, change them all, get that nice clean look, make it different than all the other cars out there. You know, make it your own with the small modifications that barely, you know, these, these bulbs, I mean, you buy these pretty much these web wedge bulbs all throughout the car, and they don't really cost, you know, more than what, a couple bucks. So, definitely a good investment, you know, looks good, and will probably make you care a little bit more for your car. All right, next step is we put this all back together. And it'll be nice, easy push pins. I don't use any tools. One, two, three, and uh, which one's my fourth? There we go. Number four. That was a pretty easy job. Just taking off four push pins. Uh, all right, so I've got a little more light for you guys now. So hopefully this will help with the details. Won't be able to see my lovely face anymore, but who cares about that? All you guys care about is the car, right? <laughs> so for this, we're going to take apart all the. We're going to take apart two push pins here. We're going to change the brake lights and the. Um, so we're going to change the brake lights and also the turn signals in the back. All right, so I'm going to unscrew this. So we got two push pins and this one thing to unscrew. This is a very easy car to do this for. You don't have to take apart this whole bottom panel. All you have to do is take apart those and lift the car back. Back. So what you see here is your brake light and your turn signals. So this this one on the top, on the very top, this will be your turn signals. So all you're gonna do is twist and pull. And there's your brake your uh, turn signal, excuse me. Alright, so just swap that out. Again, I'll put the link below in the description for all the bulbs to change out, where to buy them, what the bulb numbers are, and what I recommend changing them out to. Okay, and this right here will be a brake light. 
again just easy twist and there you are now normally I'd recommend changing the turn signals to a white or bluish LED or excuse me not LED and then so first of all I wouldn't normally change turn signal bulbs to LEDs and the reason why I don't is because then you have to deal with buying a resistor or something like that because um, I'm not too electrical I just know how to change it out but from what I understand it's a different voltage or wattage that's running through the LEDs versus the incandescence and therefore it will if you put this to that LED it will be, it will blink really quickly it because basically your system thinks that it's out so well, that's what it does is it lets you know that hey I'm out you know I'm burnt out so so that's what why I don't recommend doing it but I, re I usually recommend changing them out to a whitish blue LED let me show you a quick example so what I recommend usually changing it out to is a white bluish incandescent bulb like one of these so you can see this one is the normal color on most cars and the one on this side is the color I changed it out to it's got like a nice blue coating very light very faint gives it that nice white look but unfortunately for the Corolla I wouldn't recommend changing it out to anything unless it's burnt out to be honest just because of the fact that these see this red covering no matter what color you change this to you could change the bulbs to green or blue or pink it really doesn't matter because of the fact that with this red covering you're not going to be able to tell what it is so I, will, I wouldn't recommend wasting any time or money to change those out to a different color because you won't be able to tell that it's different all right so that is the back all right so next thing we're going to do is go to the front and i'm not sure if you can tell here but you see this uh orange signal light i'm sorry they don't call it signal light they call it an accent light so first thing i like to do is take this out because without that all you have is nice clean leds or hids all right so let's go through and take that out real quick this is a very easy job all you do is pop your hood Okay, so here's the, here's the front of the car, driver's side, and the bulb that you want to take out is way on the far right. You could actually get to it with your hands by just um, reaching. You gotta have pretty small hands though. So let me reach at it real quick. Then once you take that little butt, then once you take that bulb out. It'll be a nice clean look. You won't have that ugly orange piece on the side anymore. All right. So next thing we're going to do is how to change the turn signal. All right. And here's your passenger side turn signal bulb right here. So this I would recommend changing. I would recommend changing it to the white or bluish. Um, again, not LED, but I would change it to a whiter, bluish, incandescent bulb. That way, you no longer see this front right here. This is where your turn signal bulb is. This having this orange in there. Let me put it back in for example. So you see how this is orange right now. This is how it comes from the factory. This, in my opinion, is very ugly, especially when there's no other really orange on the car. Especially since we just disconnected the side accent lights. So there's not really not much orange else on the car. Um, so what I recommend when you change these, they can match them to the HIDs or LEDs and daytime running lights also. So that I definitely recommend doing. Usually I don't on most cars because of the fact that this has a orange uh, covering, which a lot of cars do. A lot of cars, they have an orange covering over the turn signals and then they use basically a white light, or it could also be an amber orange uh, incandescent bulb just to magnify the orange turn signal. But this car, 
is very nice that it does not have any orange front. It's a very nice clean front of the headlight. Um, so definitely recommend changing that. Once you change it to that whitish, bluish, and again, you can check your local authorities, you know, your police or whatever, but you cannot blink blue. You can't have any blue lights in your car. So even if you change the LED, you know, LEDs, HIDs, you know, any lights you change and they become too blue, I mean, that's interference with cops. So can't do that. So definitely disclaimer, I'm not in charge of that. All right. So <laughs> don't blame me. All right. So once you do change that to a nice whitish bluish light, it'll show whitish bluish even when it's off because it has that blue tint on it and this is all chrome underneath so it will basically project that even when the sun's beating on it when it's not even on all right so it looks beautiful all right all right that's the end of the video guys hope you enjoyed it and before you guys say hey, hey hold on you didn't change all the lights you didn't change our headlights and yes that's true and the reason being is because of the fact that the high beams you can actually get to and like I showed you the turn signal and those corner accent lights in the corner so you can get to all those just by under the hood if you want to change the high beams it's very rare that anybody has issues with the high beams I mean I don't know if you're in the country and you're driving a lot and you're using your high beams a lot and maybe they run out but if you wanted to get to the high beams you'd have to go through the back of the wheel well so basically you take off the screws behind here. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to change the high beams. That's a very rare thing to do. So you take apart the wheel well here and then you go on from the back because the uh, headlight assembly, this whole housing doesn't come out easily except from getting at some screws behind it. All right. So the, when you look at the back of your low beams, your headlights, it's all housed together and you can't take it out. So problem with that is you gotta change out the whole assembly. You have to change apart this whole piece if you want to get a new headlight or yours burns out. Very, very horrible thing that the Toyota Corolla has is those headlights. It looks great while they work, but if you have problems with them and wanna change them out for whatever reason, it is a pain. All right, so. If you guys have any other questions, just, and just a quick FYI, this Toyota Corolla is not mine. This is my parents. I was doing some bulb work for them, and just wanted to show you guys while I was doing it how to change all these. So in case you guys ask me a question on it, give me a little more time than normal. I usually respond to comments very quickly, but uh, most of the time, I'm sure, the same day. But um, obviously with this Corolla not being in my possession at all times, responses will be a little bit more delayed. All right. So thanks for watching. If you guys have any other questions, uh, let me know in the comments. And a few last things, not really about lights, but just the cars in general. So one of the things I always recommend at the end of these videos is two things. One is that you change your... Uh, engine air filter changes out to a Canon air filter this way you can um, Reuse it. It's actually cheaper in the long run. Basically if you do these yourself, you know You can tell once you take the air filter out and I can show you real quick if you want So you just take a couple a couple pins one And you've got two in the corner and you can see this this filter right here. This is basically a brand new car, so this will be a very clean air filter already. This car only has a few thousand miles on it. So what I recommend is changing out this filter because you can see this filter that's there right now is basically, we'll say, a almost paper-like product. So what you're going to get is a Canon air filter, which you can actually clean it. And of course they have little special uh, cleaning kit. It's like, a, I wanna say it's like 15, 20 bucks for like the cleaning kit and that lasts several times. So this way the benefit is, first of all, you get a little bit better horsepower and you also get a little better gas mileage. So whether or not you believe that it will give you more horsepower, you can forget about that. Whether or not you 
believe that it will give you better gas mileage. You can forget about that as well. Reason being because of the fact that it will, those two issues aside, which they can only be better. It cannot be worse than what your OEM is. That's for sure. So even if those two aren't a factor and you don't believe those, we'll call those an added benefit, quotes, quotes. <laughs> Do it for the fact that it provides better airflow and the fact that you never have to replace this air filter again. So let's say you take your car to an oil change shop or a dealership. They love to check this. You know, when you get your oil change, they check multiple things like your fluids, they check your air filter. And I want to say it's like 15, 15 bucks or so in order to change one of those filters out, just uh, back to a cheapo or an OEM version of it. So this way you buy the k and air filter and then you clean it yourself. They'll never say anything to you ever again. So do it just for that if you want, that you'll never have anybody to come and you know, harass you. Hey, your engine oil filter is a little bit dirty, so you mind if we change it? You know, forget that. So make sure you change that out. And the next thing I recommend getting is this. If you spend as much time in the car as I do, you will want a nice massager like this. And it plugs into the car. And it also has an attachment for home use as well. So you can plug it right in the wall or with the attachment that comes with it, you can plug it into your cigarette lighter in the car. And you could tell these are actually ball like balls here. So this is like it's a full kneading massage. This works so great. And it attaches to the back of the headrest. So works great, won't slip and slide around. I wanna say it's like 50 bucks or so on Amazon, but great, great, great. It's not just one of those, you know. So definitely recommend getting it. I think it's called Shiatsu type of massage. So, so definitely recommend picking this up. It's actually a nice quality leather too. So it doesn't look cheap at all. So definitely check that out, especially if you spend as much time in the car as I do.